We had our first snowfall of the season last night, and it reminds me that I need to put on my winter insulation. I've insulated this workshop to be able to withstand the cold temperatures of the outside. So let me show you what I've done here. Let's open up the door and take a look. The first thing I want to show you here is the floor. This is a concrete slab. Uh, there's no heating underneath. And this is a floor that I put up on sleepers. These are pressure treated 2x4s, and in between here is rigid foam insulation. That allows me to keep the cold out from underneath the slab in the workshop. I heat my workshop for two reasons. One is for comfort, and the other is to protect my tools. Condensation can build up on cold tools when exposed to warm, moist air. A cast iron table surface is a good example of this. This will retain cold temperature for a long time. If I were to heat up this workshop rapidly, I would end up with warm moisture coming in contact with a cold surface. And that's when you get condensation that gets created, and that's when you get rust. It's similar to the condensation you'd see on a window. The glass being the cold surface comes in contact with warm air, and when the air temperature drops quickly, it loses the moisture in the air and creates condensation. That same process can happen to your tools. So to protect your tools, you want to make sure you don't have a large difference between the air temperature and your tool temperature. The workshop walls are insulated to an R20 and the ceilings insulated to an R30, all covered with fire rated drywall. The most challenging part about insulating a garage is dealing with the garage door. It's something that's difficult to insulate. I've replaced my garage door with a double insulated door that has a metal skin on each side and rigid insulation on the inside. That wasn't enough though for me to deal with the winter time. So I've got an insulating blanket that I put on in the winter to help me provide that extra insulation. I'll show you how it goes together. First I unplug the garage door opener so I don't have any mishaps. And then I pull the insulation out of storage. This is a two person job so my daughter's here to help me out put this together. The insulation we're installing here is a foundation blanket. These are commonly found in big box stores. This is insulation that's been glued to the vapor barrier, and so it becomes one sheet. What I've done is just rolled this around two by twos, and we're securing them to the top of the garage door. I've got extra vapor barrier and insulation here beyond the track and what I do is I just wrap that around the end here and then take a 2x4 and wedge it in place. At the floor here I just pull out this excess insulation here, wrap the poly underneath it and then tuck it back in to where I've got that gap between the floor and the garage door. In the event I need to open this door for some reason, I can pop the safety latch here on the garage door opener, knock the blocks out the side, and I can easily lift it to slip something in and out. I rarely need to do that in the winter time, but that just gives me one option that I don't have this all sealed up tight. With insulated walls, ceilings, floor, and garage door, it doesn't really take much to heat this space. This is the heater that I use. This is an electric heater. It uses oil just circulating inside, and I've got the ability here to set a frost setting, and this is where I generally leave it. I'm looking to keep my shop at 40 degrees Fahrenheit, 10 degrees Celsius, and that allows me to make sure that I don't get the shop cold enough that I can get condensation on the tools. In the really cold days, I will turn this up so that I get more heat, but I really just keep it on a minimum setting and keep it on that frost most of the time. 
For the temperature zone I live in, in January, the coldest month, the average low temperatures are 20 degrees Fahrenheit, minus 7 degrees Celsius. So you can get an idea of what it takes to heat my workshop. I've also got supplementary heat. Above my workbench, I've got this radiant heater, and I can set this to a low setting or a high setting. This feels a lot like being in front of a fireplace. The radiant heat is really warming. So I just use this in the cases where I'm not doing a lot of movement in the shop, I might be working at my bench, and I need just a little extra warmth for the space. The last step is to reinstall the clamp wall back on my bench. If you want to insulate your garage workshop, here are some keys to success. First of all, insulate the walls and the ceiling to building code. There are codes for drywall needs. Insulate the floor with a subfloor to get it off the cold concrete and then insulate the garage door with a foundation blanket to keep the warmth in. And lastly, heat it to a constant temperature of at least 40 degrees to help prevent rust on the tools. I hope this gives you a good idea of how you can insulate and heat your workshop. This way you can enjoy it in the colder months and protect your tools from getting rust on them. Thanks for watching and enjoy your time in the woodshop. shop.